Hi, in this video, we're looking at something called percent yield. Now a yield is just how much of a product you make from a reaction. And yield is very often measured in grams because yield is a mass. But percent yields imply that you're kind of comparing two different yields. Um, so I wanna just begin this video with a visual representation of what I mean. Let's say you have a reaction with two reactants forming two products. And the reaction begins, and maybe you have a, it looks like reactant two is gonna be a limiting reactant here. So the reaction stops at this point. And let's just take a look at product one. Now we've calculated that we should get this much, but maybe we actually only get this much. Uh, this difference in the yields here actually leads you to two different terms describing yield. One is the theoretical yield. Uh, that's the yield that you've calculated for using stoichiometry. And the other is an actual yield, and that's what you, in real life, got in a lab setting. Sometimes this is called an experimental yield. Um, if I was to rephrase these types of yield, it would essentially be this. The actual yield is what you got, and the theoretical yield is what you should have. And very often these two amounts don't match. I mean, the best situation is where you can get them to be exactly the same. That would lead to a 100% yield. Uh, which is, of course, the target for every chemist. Um, but it's unrealistic, especially in a high school uh, chemistry lab. And so we usually express how good our reactions are um, in percent yield. And the way that we can get a percent yield is by taking what you got, that's that actual yield, and dividing it by what you should have. That's the theoretical yield, and then just multiply by 100, and that gives you your percent yield. So let's do a couple example problems. Let's start with one that's a little easier. This one says a reaction produced 7.89 grams of a product, but 9.23 grams was expected. This here is the theoretical yield. So that means this goes on the bottom of our fraction, and then this uh, is the actual yield because that's what was actually produced. It says calculate the percent yield. Well, this is uh, no big deal. It's just plugging in what we know, 7.89 uh, divided by 9.23 and then multiply by 100. Got my trusty calculator right over here. Uh, 7.89 divided by 9.23 times 100 would give me 85.8%. Nope, 85.5%. Uh, so that'll do it. Let's talk about sig figs. You don't want to use 100 for sig figs. It's not a measurement. So you really just want to match the significant figures of the measurements that you're using in the percent yield calculation. Now, this is maybe the most basic example. The two values are given to you, but sometimes you have to calculate to figure out what the theoretical yield is. Uh, problem will very often give you an actual yield, or let's say you're not doing this calculation based off of a problem. Let's say you're doing it based off of actual lab results. Uh, if you go to a lab bench and you carry out a reaction, you can calculate how much you'll expect of a product, and then you can go and do the reaction in real life, collect your product, measure the mass, and then from there you'll have an actual, you'll have a theoretical yield, and you can uh, divide them to, to figure out a percent yield. So this is something that in the chemistry lab we'll actually do. This problem says 1.3 grams of oxygen with excess ammonia. Now that excess ammonia piece means that this is your excess reactant. I'll just put ER for excess reactant. And this is your limiting reactant. Um, in these types of problems, you always want to use the limiting reactant because this stuff's going to run out first. And so this is what's going to, uh, is, this is the only thing you can use to calculate uh, the accurate amounts of products you'll be able to form. So it says 1.3 grams of oxygen produces 0.68 grams of water. Now this is experimentally. So this is going to be our actual yield. This is going to go up on top. But what we're missing is the theoretical yield. So in other words, if I'm putting in 1.3 grams of oxygen, using stoichiometry, we can calculate how much uh, water we should expect to form. So let's do that here. So I've got 1.3 grams of O2. And I'm gonna set up my fractions. I'm doing a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem here. So I'm gonna have three fractions. One is my molar mass, molar ratio between two substances, and then the new molar mass. And that's gonna get me how much water grams H2O. So on the bottom here, I want to put grams of O2. Uh, on the top is one mole of O2. You may remember that oxygen has a mass of 16, so two oxygens would be a mass of 32. 
So that cancels out my grams. Now I'm into moles of oxygen. I use the balance equation at this middle step here. And so here's the coefficient in front of oxygen. What that says is for every five moles of oxygen that goes into this reaction, we're comparing oxygen to water here. So six moles of water is gonna come out of it. So that's why six moles of H2O goes up on top. And then on the bottom of this last fraction here, I just wanna turn moles of water, which is what I'm in now, into grams of water. So one mole of H2O goes on the bottom. And then the mass of water, you may remember this, but if each hydrogen is one gram per mole, and there's two of them, that's two, plus 16 for the oxygen, that's 18, 18 grams per mole for water. Okay, so now you've canceled out moles of water. You've got just grams of water there. Perfect, because that's what we're after. Grab your calculator and you type in 1.3 times 6 times 18 divided by 32 divided by 5. And that gives you 0 .88. Uh, 8. 0 .88. Now this is the theoretical. This is according to the calculations, if everything went perfectly, you'd be forming 0.88 grams of water. So we're going to put that in to our percent yield equation as the theoretical yield, 0.88 grams. But the uh, actual yield is what the problem says was determined experimentally. That's 0.68 grams. And we just multiply by 100. 77%. So that's the percent yield of this uh, reaction as described. Um, now, if you're in my class, the percent yield equation is in your reference tables. It is on table 17. So if you're looking at table 17, you'll see the percent yield equations right there. Um, far less important that you memorize formulas, far more important that you know how to use them um, and also what they mean. Percent yield is a, is a concept that really kind of conveys how good your reaction was. The target is always 100% yield, but it's very, very difficult to attain that. Uh, at least you'll know how to calculate it though. Thank you.